<laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome to episode 55 of Learn and Become podcast. And today we have Wendell again. Uh, hey, I mean, his name isn't <laughs> Wendell again, but again, because he's been here once. So, hey, bro, how you doing? Yeah, and it's a combination of Wendell and the band, you know, Wendell and Bear Me Again. Yes, <laughs> it could be your it could be your name in the future. Yeah, man, totally an artistic name. <laughs> yes, I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing really good, and thank you for being here. Uh, yes, man. it's an honor to have you again, and I'm so excited for for today's talk. Yes, man, me too. I can't wait to hear your amazing questions. <laughs> Yeah, so today we'll be talking more about the band than about the English learning process, right. which is what we talked about on the last time we talked, right? That was about your learning process, how you got to learn English, how English and music kind of came together to you and how they helped each other. Mm -hmm. So we talked about something like that. It'll yes, be yes. Like there is no running off topic. So whatever we say, that will be on topic. But the first question I want to ask is why bear me again? Why this name? Wow, great question, man. I, I could go on like the, the entire conversation talking about this. <laughs> I don't know. Let's do uh, it. so bear me again is like kind of like a, a prayer, uh, a request to be renewed, you know. Um, people are usually more familiarized with the, the translation bear as the animal bear, you know, <laughs> um, but it's uh, in Brazil, like people usually relate bear to the animal, um, but it's also a verb. Uh, and you know that you would be better explaining, <laughs> um, which means to, to have it on you would like like to to hold something on you like a ring bearer at a wearing a uh, wedding uh, i don't know if i should be talking about like english yes. uh, stuff like right. english teachings you know <laughs> yeah so it's the verb that it means that to to carry something on you like uh like a card bearer is a person who has a card on them um and it also means to to fruit to fruitify you know like to uh, to produce fruit, to to make life, and uh, that's like the um, the main idea that I wanted to to imply in the in the name of the band, which is to like to to create me again, to to renew my mind. So, like I said, it's a it's a prayer, like it's uh, it's meant to be said to God, like God, just just make me again. Because I know how we can get um, we can get caught up in these cycles, you know, routines. We uh, human beings are so easily programmed, and uh, we just get caught up in life in general, like doing all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff for ourselves. Um, and when you when you get to die for yourself, when you get to die to your will and to your you know your expectations and you just like accept life and pray that like you will you will be a good steward of your life you know like uh, you you kind of have the chance to to see a new version of yourself in each situation you know and that's really cool um uh, anyone who knows me more closely more personally will know that i'm very like i'm a very spiritual person i'm i'm very uh, dedicated to spirituality um, and to the knowledge of God, you know, and so that's my like my main pursuit in life is like to to know who is behind this creation, you know, who designed this whole thing, and uh, feeling like you you can directly contact him through your spirit, through your thoughts, and through your mind, and uh, having um real evidence or or experiences that reflect uh what he's doing just just drives me so wildly uh 
I don't know, I don't know how to put it into words. Like it drives, you know, my, my soul to, to live more, to, um, you know, to, to grow and to mature and, and uh, to, to become a new person from season to season and to, you know, develop. That's Maybe I, 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 might, I might have run off topic a little bit. There's no, <laughs> but I don't, yeah, yeah, I'd like to say, <laughs> yes, that's how uh, I, but, I, I kept talking because I felt comfortable to do that. Yes, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you're home. <laughs> yes, literally. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, uh, but like to, to have this feeling uh, to be renewed. It comes from from a place of acknowledgement that you're not what you're supposed to, right? Yes. So when was yes. this moment for you? Uh huh. Wow, man. Because if you think, I think something I, is yes. ready, like you want me to make it over, right? You know what I mean? Yes, man. Yes. Well, um, I always see my my flaws evidently, like. I, I can always, I always, I'm always aware that they exist. I see a lot of them um, in my daily routine. Sometimes when I get angry, you know, like uh, lack of uh, emotional control sometimes. Uh, and that's just part of being a human um, and knowing that you're limited. Um, so I, I grew up in the church, you know, like in the evangelical church, um, And uh, I was always taught that we uh, that we are sinners and stuff, you know, like that we, we have to to get rid of our sins and stuff. Um, and before, to me, it was kind of like you have to get rid of your sins to to avoid being punished, you know, by God. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, I just see like, man, if you want to live a good life, you know, like <laughs> you you shouldn't be like eating fat like crazy you know uh you shouldn't be drinking soda like crazy that's that's all like uh, what we call sin it's just like things that harm you harm your psychological health your mental health your emotional health and your physical health as well so um everybody is a sinner all the time everybody's dealing with something that you know like uh, human beings are just uh, uh we tend to to cling to uh things that just make us feel well feel safe and feel comfortable you know like so it could be sugar addiction or anything that you just run to when you feel like something like things are not the way they should be or you're you're sad or you're happy so you just Uh, go taking making choices and and taking actions that will just leave you that will just lead you farther and farther from all your your goals and the vision that God put in your mind to accomplish you know like everybody uh, at least the people I I, I usually talk to uh, have so many dreams and, and things they want to get done and and do with love and I believe that we all receive something in our minds from God, like uh, something that will make us complete, that will uh, drift us, that will take us away from, uh, from our captiveness to our own will, you know? So that's, that's a topic that's been in my mind a lot. Uh, I kind of even forgot what you, <laughs> what you asked a little bit, like, um, oh, that but I always like noticed the point. that, that yeah. I have to, Uh, fight myself, fight my will, fight my soul to be centered, to be aligned with, you know, health, with, with God in uh, like in a, in a simple way, you know, like uh, you feel good, you, you, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so that kind of stuff. I see. Yeah. There is a saying by James Clear. Um, he said that easy has a cost. And it's very interesting. He says, like, nice. easy has a cost. Uh, he, he gives, like, three main examples. One of them is exercising might be, might be hard, but never moving is surely harder. Mm. Uh, the, the second one, I think, is 
having a difficult conversation is hard, but avoiding every conflict becomes harder. And I feel yes, like that's man. the point you're saying about sin. Like yes, you uh -huh. have something good, but it's long term not going to be good. So this yes. is easy will have a cost that will take you away from who you are. Exactly, man. Yeah, and it's uh, usually much more expensive. Like, yes, not usually, always. <laughs> yeah. And and about the band and just this whole process. You guys have just completed 10 years. Happy anniversary. That's Thank you. <laughs> and what were the biggest challenges you faced in those 10 years? Um, I think there may be bigger challenges to come, um, but up to now, I don't know if they were, because like when you love something so much, um, the challenges don't seem that big. So, If I start talking about this, I will probably be like, yeah, man, surprised, you know, uh, with myself, like, wow, yeah, that was really hard and really tough, but it doesn't, like, at the moment when you're living it, it doesn't seem like like big conditions or uh, hard to, to get through. Um, but I guess, man, I would say, um, wow, let me, let me think this through. The biggest challenges. <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess um, organizing a team, you know, like, like um, um, conciliating uh, agendas, you know, like uh, getting people to work together. Um, to me, that's the hardest thing about anything, you know, like, because, man, like working by yourself sucks. Like it's the worst thing ever, you know. <laughs> Um, and for a while, uh, the band went through a period when I considered that, like I considered like just doing everything I would do, like the, from the music production to marketing and the, the whole process, process, you know, um, and because of that difficulty, you know, of aligning your, your, uh, regular life, your daily routine to, to the artistic uh, endeavor of, of having a band, which takes a lot of time and a lot of work. Um, and I, I, I found that to be the, the hardest point, like uh, getting everybody at the same time to do the same thing, focused on the same thing, because, you know, we're always going through something. So to focus uh, on, on a project, when you have something other going on in your mind is really hard. So when you put like five or more people involved in the same process and, and having to have all of them with the same mind, that's the, that's the hardest thing. So uh, with time, the, that, um, that system, the band system started uh, evolving or, or becoming something very different. Uh, Uh, the 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 initial years, we were more like uh, like like four people who made all the decisions, and you know we were all like the the leaders of the band, and then it all started shifting to to me being being the leader, and I I I always thought of myself as just like a one of the co-founders, but all the other co-founders left the band, <laughs> so I'm the only founder of the band that's in the band and um everybody in the team is like so excited and so psyched and and they're so amazing they help so much and uh i could never do anything without them you know it's it's actually contradictory to the last song we released you know some things you have to do alone but uh it's just some things like most things you have to do with people and uh Like, like organizing your life to be able to be a, a to reach your your full social potential and exercise leadership and exercise companionship and fun and the project as a work and the project as a, a hobby too because it is a kind of a hobby too you know uh, although we take it seriously. 
um, getting my mind, uh, wrapping my mind around all this, this concept took a really, real long time. Like um, seeing myself as a, a friend and, and the leader of the project and, uh, you know, the, the, the main source of ideas for the project that was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how do I say this? Like uh, an amount of, of of responsibility and and privilege that I kind of wasn't counting on, but became such a uh, such a source of dopamine to to know go after go after this you know more intensely and and now it's a uh, it's a big motivation to me to to be able to, to call this project mine and uh, to, you know, to, to see how some people recognize it as part of their lives too. And uh, it's so nice, so nice. So yeah, yes, I guess crazy. that's the biggest challenge. Yes. It comes down to people. Yeah, and man, everything. That's the best and the, the hardest. Yes. That's, that's yes. so cool. You, you mentioned yeah, like the past expectations. And so I have a kind of mixed question on it. Mm. Kind mm. of like with the name past future now. Because the name is Bear Me Again. So it's about processes. Like being mm -hmm. renewed. You know the Bible says it's from glory to glory. It will uh -huh. be transformed. And when you started it 10 years ago, you probably had a different expectation than what you have now, 10 years yes. later. And so your, your first expectation was one, but the expectation you have now is different. And like 10 years you'll go through and then in 2032, like what was your first kind of like wrapping that up as a question yes so like uh -huh. being being like like the bear me again in practical terms for the band uh -huh. and your expectations what was uh -huh. your expectation when you started like how do you see yourself right now and how do you think the future will shape that like did hmm. you get the question nice yes of course yes it was kind okay. of like um, all uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> so, so, yeah, crazy chronology. <laughs> um, well, the um, the beginning, I guess, like I can only see this now because um, um, I've I've developed the the very good habit of meditating. You know, like so, I I I can see some things that I used to do that were obviously based on a, a weak psychological uh, expectation or like I like I when I see why I wanted things before nowadays I'm like man that's so dumb like if I would have never been satisfied if I if I got what I wanted then you know and I guess uh, I even wrote a song about that <laughs> and this sentence is like I said it the other time too um, that what, what is was about um, it, I, this one, I, it was a, a, I released it in Portuguese with, under the name Wenjing. <laughs> um, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah. Yes. I listen to the song sometimes. Yes. It talks uh, about our, my, my. Our history. Our story. Yeah, our beginning. Our, story, our, our beginning. beginning. Yes. It talks about my relationship with music when I started. Um, like that I just our saw. Our beginning was cliche. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I like when I started, it was uh, all about my, my brother. I, I, I was never a very sociable person. Um, I was very, I was always very uh, introverted. And uh, my, my biggest or only reference of a good close friend was my brother. So I just like, I wanted to um, impress him um and just like be, be good at what he wanted to be good at and he started uh learning about music and um um we started practicing together like playing songs together 
um, figuring out songs and showing to each other just to like, I don't know, just, just hang out. Uh, and it was, man, music is so much fun. Like if, if you've done it, you will know that it's like, it's like, it's kind of like surf. I've never surfed, but I can, I can totally relate like the ideas because when you, when you get a note, man, and it goes like you get the right technique in your voice and the right core, like the, the chord comes out right. And you, you know, you just, it just clicks, you know, like it, that's one of the best feeling feelings ever. You know, it's like when you surfing a wave you're like ah oh, man this feels so good and you don't have to make an effort for it to sound good it's music you know god created it so like you, you don't have to do anything you know like other than break this a little bit <laughs> uh, so doing that with my brother like my whole teenage years we would sit down and play u2 songs and coldplay songs and uh, all kinds of songs uh together and sing together and I realized that around him, I could be myself, you know, like, of course, I knew that from, from the beginning. But as I started um, getting better from practicing music, um, I would just let myself, you know, like, I would just, like, I would try things that I wouldn't in public because I'm shy or introverted around him. And I noticed that it was good. Like, so I was like, man, I, I can sing and I can play. That's so cool. And then the idea of having a band uh, started taking shape in my mind. So I think th the root of the idea was to have a relationship and to be with someone that's, that's what I think today. But at the time I associated the happiness to being good and to being considered or recognized as good you know so i went on for years doing music and like trying to show it to as many people as possible trying to show it in in uh venues and uh you know on on instagram and all social media anything to show people that i could do this and maybe we we would have you know the same connection the same um but that didn't bring me any joy just brought me pressure and uh you know like what am i gonna do to um to be I, that's not something that you think about it's just like when you think about it later you you start seeing that um you used to do this kind of thing so I, it's not something that i consciously thought about but when i think about it today it's like man why else would i be like you know, doing some like investing my money and my time and my energy um, on something because I kind of lost my relationship with music for a little while. I, I just did it because I, I wanted to to keep the project going. I couldn't let it go because, you know, like um, it, it meant something to other people and I couldn't let them down. And uh you know, just like everybody would be wondering, like me wondering about everybody wondering, like, why, you know, like, why uh, was this not real? Like, uh, what happened and stuff? And then, man, I think I'm getting a little lost in, in the whole process. But um, back then, I didn't know yeah, that but, I... But you got to the point. Yes. Like, the expectation uh, was to kind of be famous through music yes like popularity but mm -hmm. looking back you actually just wanted to be around people that you like hanging out playing yes music because that's what you love but for a little while you got like trapped up by the normal expectation of being famous yes um i don't know if being famous is the right term although it involves that too but being accepted um accepted is also a very watered down term uh like respected or like recognized you know okay. as as worthy of being part of society society you know it's Maybe dumb to say it like that <laughs> yeah not only you know like um 
the having a title um, will will give people um, a place, you know. So if you say like, yeah, I'm. Uh, that's like the first question you get asked when you when you go out, you bump into uh, you you meet someone. Uh, to say, what do you do for a living? You know, like, what's your title? What, like, what are you known for? What are you recognized for? You know, and to me, giving up the idea of being a musician, I would never be able to say, like, I am a, I'm a songwriter. I, you know, like, I'm, I'm an indie rock player, you know, because that to me was the, the main or the best reference for what you should do if you want to be accepted, you know, to me, that was the coolest thing. When I, when I saw people playing, I, I watched concerts all the time and I watched videos of uh, these people giving interviews about how real their music were, was and um, about their relationship. And I saw all that truth behind bands, behind their lives, behind their music. And uh, that, was, that was so cool, but like, when I started doing that, I, I got a little disconnected from the real purpose of connecting to your neighbor, you know, not people, man, your neighbor, the person who's around you, the person who's next to you, you know, um, and like playing by myself was never really cool because, you know, being by yourself sometimes is not cool, you know, um, sometimes it is it's wonderful. But playing with someone and um, singing your part and seeing the other person sing their part and playing your part and seeing the other person play their part, that's the most exciting thing. Uh, and I totally forgot about that. And I think the song Here I'm Fine talks a little about that. It says that the, the people around me, the crowd around me was my anxiety and my prospect. My prospect. I was confused by the melody. <laughs> um, and, um, but I hadn't, but I had never understood that what makes anything feel good is having people around you. So if you're, if you're, a, I don't know, like a teacher or a, a journalist, anything, man, nothing makes sense. Uh, you know, getting to the top, reaching your highest goals. Um, it's like that guy said from the movie Into the Wild. Happiness is only true or real when shared, you know, like it, it can't be true unless you share your happiness, you know. So I was like, uh, it says in the Bible, kicking against the goats, which means to like punch the tip of a knife, a knife, punch the tip of a knife. Uh, and that's what I was doing. I was punching a tip of a knife, man, like trying to get things to succeed. Um, but all that changed um, in a, a, a more recent, uh, a more recent experiences that I've had with um, with God, and with spirituality, with understanding um, understanding spiritual ideas and uh, spiritual processes. I started understanding uh, because I, I believe as a Christian that Christ is God, that Jesus is God. You know, you know that <laughs> because we know each other person personally, but I'm um, saying this for anyone who's watching this. I believe that Jesus Christ is God. So what he says is very important to me, you know, <laughs> and um, I've, I've read what he said so many times. You know, I'm, I really want to memorize what he said, because one thing that was that really stuck to me is he says, if you obey my teachings, um, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And it's like, man, that's, that's the, the most truthful statement that I've ever heard. Because when you start obeying what Jesus says about loving your enemy, about loving your everybody, about not making justice, not doing justice, but leaving all justice to God and just loving, love your neighbor above all else guard your heart above all else just do that don't worry about your car getting taken away don't worry about getting robbed don't don't worry about being killed what he came to say was man i came to this world and after he resurrected he said 
uh, I, man, I went to the other world and I was given all the authority in the universe. So I'm saying that if you just love your, uh, your neighbor as you love yourself, you'll be fine. You know, so I, I, I always I talked about this also on the song True Love, which was kind of like the, the peak of this process to me when I was writing True Love um, was when I understood that I didn't have to change. I, I could be myself and I could just love people around me and just uh, receive their love and accept their love and love them back with all my energy. And even if I get killed by them like Jesus was, I will still have a hope to be fulfilling prophecies, you know, to be with my life planting seeds that will last forever. So I've never believed as strongly, as firmly as I do now after obeying for a few years, after obeying his teachings for a few years, I can see clearly in my life fruits, you know, growth. And man, it's, it's so huge that I can't put into words, you know, like psychological breakthroughs, um, mental healing, emotional healing. I've, I've come to the point of long time ago, I have considered suicide. You know, a lot of people have this, our society nowadays um, is crazy, you know, like I feel like I'm talking too much, <laughs> maybe. Um, but no, you're not. man, like getting, getting to know, good. Jesus's ideas for what they were, not for what the 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 church, the 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 national church in general as a group, is is showing by their lives. But just reading what Jesus said, it's just like it's very few words if you if you consider the whole Bible. Like he he's uh, Jesus's words are are a few parts. If you just read his words. They're usually in red. You will be like, oh my God, you know, like, this is amazing. Like, I, I, I can live this way and uh, find so much abundance, so much hope, so much fruitfulness and, 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 and love. It feels like inside, it's, it's just like he said, everything starts making sense. He said something about, like, implanting somehow a, 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 a river of flowing waters in your soul and that's what it feels like you know it's like a river of flowing waters whatever you're doing whatever circumstance you're in if you center your mind in the reality that this what we're living right now is kind of like a reality show we're just living on stalecas here and you know <laughs> uh, this always this is not ours you know what what's gonna be our afterlife you know, and when you center your mind on that, it just makes you feel like, man, okay, so this life, man, I, I just get to enjoy it. I just get to take advantage of the time I have, of the, the breath I have, you know, the, the food I have. And you can make smarter choices and you, can, you get more relaxed and more less anxious yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's the that's the kind that's the kind of place I am right now. Um, relearning what bear me again really means, you know. I'm being born again, again, you know, all the time, every year, every day. <laughs> uh, like so reborn I me think, again. Yeah, Re reborn. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess reborn. that answers the the third part, which is the future, man. I I can't wait for it, but it's like too blurry right now i could be anywhere i could be i wouldn't mind being like going to uh, the desert you know to 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 live right now this is this is my confidence like it's like it's like i'm gonna talk about the bible again because something that consumes me a lot it's like paul says like i can do i can do all things through him who strengthens me and he's talking about like being able to go hungry to go without food to go without sleep to go without anything to 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 be without anything and to be content because you have something in your heart it's just burning you know yes or to be with all like you exactly or yes all. but your expectation yes. is not in it which is pretty yes cool. exactly like that's that's awesome when we 
when we don't have an expectation about the future, we will be able to embrace a much brighter future, like if you will, like yes. John the Baptist, his vision about the future was limited and that limited mm -hmm. him. Like mm -hmm. he, he had a burning fire, but he had an expectation uh, mm -hmm. aligned with it. So not having a, like an expectation, but in the same time being like kind of fired up to do what you can do now mm -hmm. uh, will lead you probably like beyond what your expectation would be. Yes, man, totally. It's like following your headlights, you know? Yes, and, and what is like really cool for me is that that's the process, like you write. And in the end of the day, you write songs, you play songs, like you, we know that English and music kind of came together to you and help mm -hmm. each other as we, we spoke last time. Uh, but like what you do, you do to, to help people to be, to kind of bear them again. Mm -hmm. That's the, the thing which aligns with what we believe for the learning process, which is you have to learn and that will eventually transform you into something. Yes, the, man. Like nice. the English learning process, for, for example, will transform you into a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily about like doing what you always wanted to. Could be something mm -hmm. different. But yeah, you got the point. So nice, man. Pretty cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah, so any any final considerations, anything you want to kind of bring up to? Um, well, let's see. Was deep. I don't think People so. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, their minds that was, listening to yeah. <laughs> that was deep. I am, um, I guess, like um, talking about about the band. Um, like this is all like taking shape now you know like it's a, a thing that's starting to to be rebirthed uh, uh now again um and we're starting to get back on social media and stuff like that so like it's kind of messy but um we have a lot of plans for this year uh we're completing our 10th anniversary so that's kind of big news uh kind of uh how do you say a, a big celebration to us for us um so like i guess uh we'll see each other a lot this this year <laughs> yes yes yeah and uh -huh. for you guys listening watching if you haven't heard yet you should i mean you have to if you don't yes you're, you have you're to. missing you're missing out so <laughs> be bad for you but the name yes. of the, the band as we mentioned is bear me again um yes. I think you guys have what, like 30 songs? Like, so I know, 15. <laughs> yes, but it feels like 30 because they're good. So <laughs> you will listen nice. to them on repeat. Uh, yeah. Yes, and, and thank you so much for the conversation. That was really yes, deep man. And thank very you. interesting. Uh, thank you. It was so good that time went by like this. It yes. feels like we're talking for 10 minutes and uh -huh. almost like an hour, which was awesome. Yeah, man really cool man i love talking to you again i always love talking to you um so yeah man i can't wait for the next time <laughs> yes i hope next time we'll have a better structure and a uh, two-hour podcast like yes with, with a better structure we can probably yeah run something mm -hmm. like that in person having a coffee sounds great man yes totally <laughs> yeah it's not i drink coffee so we have awesome man that'd be that'd be lovely Bro, thank you so very much for, for this time. I know you have a busy schedule and you have many things to do. So I appreciate your, your time and availability. And, you know, you can count on me if you need anything. And I'll see you this week. I'll see you around. Yes. 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 And for you guys <laughs> listening, don't forget to, to check them out. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. See you.